Hello? Hey, Billy, it's Paul. Sorry, I, I couldn't take this, do the call during a break because we ran over. I wanted to make sure we, we got you on time. So this is live on the air right now. You answering the phone in our, our usual 30 seconds of pleasantries. So how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. Thanks for having me. It's been yeah. quite the day. Yeah, I, I'll bet. Uh, we have talked about this. And look, there were, it's, I was telling Garrett, our producer, a second ago, uh, there is, there's no, like, there were games last night. We have spent seven minutes on it total uh, because of this. This has been your whole life for a couple of months now, uh, is SMU getting in the ACC. What is the vibe around Dallas today, around the campus of them getting in the big time and, or in the power conferences? Uh, today, even though they had to to make huge sacrifices to do it, yeah, it, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, you know, I woke up and and jumped on a flight to actually go see a recruit in Florida. So mm. um, I thought I was in the clear, jumping on a six a.m. flight, and uh, maybe this would get a decision out around ten central. But nope, bright and early around seven a.m. This dropped, and when I tell you, there are people that have been around since the Pony Express, seen it all unfold um, with, you know, the program starting from scratch to now being, you know, continue, in a continued role supporting it. I mean, a lot of people have, have tears uh, about today. Uh, it is uh, that emotional. It's been a long, long road for SMU to get back to this level. Now they need to kick the door down and go win a conference championship or, or play for one this year. But they still – have been working so hard through the years on facilities, on coaching salaries, on support, NIL now. It's been this uh, group effort um, that really um, got, I think, ignited when they didn't get into the Big 12, um, when UCF, Houston, and and Cincinnati got in. And then you couple that with Sonny Dykes leaving. And there are a lot of motivated people, namely the, the chairman of the Board of Trustees, David Miller, who just spent probably the better part of a year and a half campaigning, pulling in support from George W. Bush to Condoleezza Rice, Oliver Luck, um, hiring consultants and going on the offensive to get this done and to see it all come together on campus. They just wrapped up their celebration. This is actually perfect timing um, on campus. It, it was um, emotional. It was uh, a statement that SMU is back in the, in the ranks among you know, top college programs. Again, they need to go out and win at a high level on the football field and other programs, but it's been such a long road. It, it was really emotional um, from what I, I've seen today. It's been hard uh, for anybody not named Clemson and Florida State to win the ACC in football. It's been hard for anybody not named Duke, Duke or North Carolina, although Miami's been, been really fantastic lately, to win the ACC in basketball. But that's not obviously what this is about. How do you feel about, over the next five years, their ability to compete in that conference and be near the top of it? Yeah, I think in basketball they have a lot of strides to make. Uh, They're still kind of rebuilding that program. But, you know, in football, this is a program that has a lot of NIL support. Um, when I tell you it's in the millions per year, um, it's probably around 2 million that they, that they commit annually. And they've gone out and got the best transfer class in the group of five, the last two years, they've been, um, among the top overall transfer classes and they've just been missing that power five what power four now or power three, whatever you want to uh, put it as a uh, conference to help recruit high school players. Um, at a high level. And now that they have that, they're expected to bring in a lot more talent. And the big thing, though, is the support from the NIL side of things is there to continue to, if there is a situation where they need to push on that front, they feel confident now that they can compete with just about anyone. And that's what it's all about is getting players. And this roster has been turned over going into this season where they feel like they can win an an AAC championship as uh, in their final year in the league. And that would catapult them into feeling pretty good about coming into the ACC and being competitive. I think once you make that jump from a group of five to a power conference, your depth is going to have to continue to be upgraded and, and your talent just overall. But they feel like they're going to be able to compete. I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to compete um, for an ACC championship in year one. I, I, 
don't know if that's feasible just yet, um, but we'll see what the transfer portal brings them again uh, this off season. But they will have a, a football team that isn't going to come in and, and necessarily be a doormat, and that's because they have the support to go out and get players of you know that are quality and that fit their system and want to be at SMU, and they, they've showed that this off season. Um, so I, I think they're headed in the right direction and they need to go out and make a statement this year as they go off to the ACC in 2024. Billy, I'll say this, and this is as someone, I'm an, I'm an FSU grad, so I follow them, you know, religiously. If FSU and Clemson and North Carolina leave that league, and I think if that happens, then Miami's probably out too. So if those four teams, even though Miami hasn't won since 01, uh, and not even when they were in the ACC, they haven't won the ACC at all. But if you take those four teams out of it, it's kind of a similar situation to the Big 12 where you take Oklahoma and Texas out and start kind of a new league. SMU could really, you know, whenever that time is that those schools might leave, kind of be one of the better teams just by being there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and growing up in Florida, I, I watched a lot of Florida State, too. So um, I know that history and what, what they're aiming for. And I think it's going to be one of the more intriguing things over if it takes a decade and three years to unfold as to, you know, how they go about maybe either their next conference move or whatever happens on that route um, is going to be interesting. But you're absolutely right. If those schools find a way to somehow get out, uh, they are uh, SMU is going to be in position to you know, be at, right at the top of that league, and um, you know. But whenever that happens, you know, quite honestly, with the way SMU is investing in their football program, there's a chance they're going to be competitive right at the top uh, during that time. You know, they're they're going to have to land some of those four star, five star type guys here and there, and if not, supplement them with really good transfers. But SMU has a good blueprint for doing that they just have been missing that power conference appeal but um you know whatever the future of the acc looks like whether that's with or without those three teams smu is you know (laughs) trust me they are committed uh, as ever especially now uh, that they're finally in you'll see even more donations roll in i know they have a lot of um uh, people with wealth that maybe were more casual with their support of athletics but now they're they're expecting a lot of that to ramp up even more, which uh, is just going to put them in, you know, an even stronger position as they, you know, try to enter the league and make some noise. Well, you mentioned, you know, losing Sonny Dykes earlier and losing Sonny Dykes to your crosstown rival uh, really, I mean, was, was salt in a wound uh, already. This really probably positions them better to make sure that if Rhett Lashley gets hot, like Sonny Dykes did, that they can say, well, now you, you can stay here. Yeah, absolutely. I I think so. And uh, obviously, uh, coming off of uh, the Sunny Dyke departure, uh, I've you know looked at you know just kind of how coaches go about their futures a little differently. Even Luke Fickle leaving a Cincinnati for Wisconsin kind of surprised me, even though that was a it's still a sizable gap in in what the Big Ten resources are and things like that. But you know, with Rhett Lashley, I I think he's very happy at SMU. Um, I know he just built a home um, relatively close to campus and. He's been, you know, really committed to the program. He wanted to come back. He wanted this job um, while he was the offense coordinator at Miami. In fact, you know, when he left for that job, he told me, "I, I hope I find my way back here uh, pretty soon." Um, so it was pretty uh, interesting when, you know, the job was very clearly opening up uh, that uh, he ended up getting it and uh, get, um, getting it and um, you know taking it over. But you know, SMU when when Sunny Dykes was leaving, they were prepared to back up the brings truck for him and, and pay him four and a half million dollars a year and give him a six year deal and give assistant coaches, you know, salary boosts and, and, you know, get shovels in the ground for the uh, $110 million end zone complex. And, you know, Sonny Dykes, I think was already very far down the road with TCU and ultimately ends up going that way. But um, this is a school that even back then uh, was ready to pay for a coach to stay um, as long as he's proved you know, to be worth that type of money. And I, I think Rhett Lashley, you know, probably, you know, I assume they're going to be right at the top of the AAC this year. It's probably going to get a raise just because you've got to get that in line with other ACC schools. But um, he's a guy that I think has a list of jobs that would probably intrigue him, but also that list of jobs, you know, maybe in Arkansas, his home state and Auburn. Um, I don't know if they'll be um, looking at a new coach here, um, you know, that soon. So, um 
you know, for now he's, he's, he's that guy for SMU and he's fully committed. I can tell you that. Billy Embody on three dot com covers SMU LSU recruiting was a fan. It's a fantastic writer. Anyway, he's been on the show with us the last couple of weeks, uh, and uh, certainly appreciate you, you doing that, Billy. I know that you had to to get off the phone early, so I promised and I delivered. Thanks for hopping on the show. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks for having me on, and uh, have a good rest of your uh, or have a great uh, Labor Day weekend. All right, thanks, Billy. Billy Embody on three dot com with us and.